Now let's continue the same problem, the previous problem here. We have calculated final end moments. We have entered these moments in the frame according to their signs, clockwise, anti-clockwise at the end. And then now we have to construct bending moment diagram. So let us take this frame as a A reference line to construct BMD. Now first due to loading, now due to this concentrated load for simply supported beam we know this is WEB by L and this comes out to be 14.4. So this value is 14, we will just check all these values, 14.4 is this total from the baseline. Net moment we have to calculate after superimposition. Then this is W L square by 8. This is W L square by 8. Parabolic since this is UDL. This is 3.375. Now due to end moments. So this is anticlockwise. Produces tension upward. 10.375. So this is 10.264. This clockwise also produces tension upward and this is 2 point doing this 2.2511 and again anti-clockwise. So this is 5.442. This is 2.511 and this is zero here free end then this is clockwise tension is on this side this is again tension is on this side so this is 6.033 and this is 2.953 so this gives us the bending moment diagram the centered area you just plot it this added area represents final BMD. Added area represents final BMD. So this is minus plus say minus minus plus minus or plus depending upon your this is minus. Okay. Uh, no load is also there. This load W12 due to load this is 12. This total ordinate is 12. Now, uh, this is not the final. This shaded area is now will change. So our diagram will be like this. So this area between the two diagrams due to loading. So this is minus, this is plus and this is minus. So this is BMD. So now one more problem of non-sway we will consider and then we will start sway type frames. I think for non-sway frames and beams, now you can do, you can solve the problems, do the practice for various problems. Now say, let's take a frame like this. And the ends of frame are fixed. It carries a load, say, 20 kilo newton here, say, 20 collinear, 20 kilo newton, because this is 2 meter, this is 3 meter, this is 2 meter, this is 3 meter, and the member BC carries UDL of. 4 kilo newton meter. So this carries UDL of 4 kilo newton meter. So you take this as a 4 meter. So the length of that member is uh, 6 meter. So this you take 6 meter. 
So moment of inertia I here, moment of inertia I and 2i. So this is A, B, C, D. Assume that the frame is opened out. If it is opened out it, and with continuous supports at B and C, it becomes continuous B. It becomes continuous B. But that you just imagine, there is no need to draw a frame by opening the legs like a continuous B, but you can assume and whenever you are finding out the fixed end moment, say that load is acting downward. So that left and right end can be identified immediately. So first step, let's calculate fixed end moment. Let's solve this problem. M F A B equal to, now A is left end minus W A B square by L square minus W is 20. A is 3, this is 2 square divided by 5 square. So you do these calculations. Then MFBA equal to plus WS square B upon L square. I think you do this. MFBC minus WL square by 12. This is UDL. MFCB, this is plus WL square by 12. Again due to UDL. And then M, F, C, D. Now C becomes left hand minus W, A, B square upon L square. Here minus W is 20. A is 2. B is 3 square divided by 5 square. Then you calculate M, F, D, C equal to this is plus 20 into 2 square 3 divided by Five square. So you find out all this. So you will get the fixed end moments. Exactly similar to the continuous beam. There is no change at all. And now next is the distribution factors. Now there are joints at B and C. Joints are B and C. So distribution factors K. So you first consider joint B, so K, B, A, at B towards A, stiffness of B, A, 4 E, I of L is 5, divided by 4 E, I, L is 5, plus B, C, C is again rigid joint, will be treated as a continuous, like continuous, so again 4 E, I, value of I is 2 I, divided by 6, so we will get distribution factor and KBC will be equal to 1 minus KBA. So you calculate this. Then join C. It's KCB equal to stiffness of CB. 4A value of I is 2I divided by 6 divided by 4A 2I divided by 6 plus CD. It is D is fixed 4EI by L is 5 so you will get this and kcd will be 1 minus kcd so you calculate all these distribution factors so after getting the distribution factors let's prepare a moment distribution table that is the third step and you know very well how to prepare the table this frame is opened out like a continuous beam and then the moment distribution table exactly similar to the continuous beam is to be prepared. So now this is a select like a continuous beam. Say it takes support under the support A, B, C, and this is D. Say distribution factors over B, distribution factors over C. Say this is A, this is B, C and D. Very, very simple. So now, so enter the calculated values. Actually, I don't have the answers for this. Mm, okay, I will check it out. 0.38.62. This is 0.38.62. 0.62 due to symmetric 
then the fixed end moments are so fixed end moments uh, minus 9.6 this is minus 9.6 plus 14.4 and due to union it comes out to be 12 12 so minus 12 this is plus 12 and due to again I think this is minus 14.4 and this is plus 9.6 fixed end moments. Now here again you just uh, watch the end supports. If A or D, if any one of them is hinge or both are hinge, then first of all you have to release the moments at A and D and carry over. But here A is fixed as well as D is fixed. So nothing is required. Initial adjustments are not at all required. There is no need to find out initial fixed end moments. So directly moment distribution can be started. So second step, balancing. You can start balancing directly. Now balancing means here you calculate unbalanced moment. That is plus 14.4 minus 12. So what you will get 2.4 as the unbalanced moment. Balanced will be, unbalanced is positive, balanced will be negative. That moment multiplied by 0.38 you write here. Moment multiplied by 0.62 right here. Similarly, this here it is. Uh, minus, unbalanced is minus, balanced is plus, plus. So again you find out this and then carry over. Carry over to next support by half value with same sign. Negative, half value, this is positive and this is negative. Then this is to be distributed because now you know the procedure very well. This is plus, this will be minus, this will be minus. This is minus, plus, plus. So balancing carry out balancing. So this step is balancing. Then carry over. Positive. Then this is negative. Positive. Negative. Then this is negative, negative, positive, positive. Balancing. This is balancing. Then again carry over and see how many cycles are required to vanish the unbalanced moment so that then we can stop. So if the unbalanced moment becomes negligible or the value of unbalanced moment comes out to be in point not something then you stop and while stopping you just balance and then stop. Balance and then stop. Suppose after these four cycles if you got the very small unbalanced moment, negligible unbalanced moment, then you stop. Or you carry more number of terms, more number of cycles in order to vanish the unbalanced moment. Then here, whatever you will get the final moments, I think this value is 10.24. You just check it, minus 10.24. And here, this is 13.24. 09. So this is plus 13.09 minus 13.09 because of symmetry this plus 13.09 minus 13.09 and this is plus 10.24. So these are the final moments and once you get the final moments then as usual you construct BMD. So BMD will be now like this, first due to the loads, this is the reference line, WL by, sorry, WEB by L for simply supported, this is 5, so 24, so what you will get here is, So this ordinate is 24. Similarly, this side you will get 24. So this is 24 because same loading is there. Due to UDL, WL square by 8, this is 4. L square 36 divided by 
8 80 so parabolic because UDL and this is 80 now let's draw BMD due to the end moments now end moment this is anti-clockwise this is clockwise this is again anti-clockwise this is clockwise and this is an anti-clockwise and this is clockwise so that means if you see the arrows all arrows are inward means all ordinates will be outward so this value 10.24 this is 13.09 this must be equal and opposite that means the joint B and C must have been equilibrium that is MBA plus MBC must be 0 MCD plus MCD must be equal to 0 so now you draw this uh, diagrams so all ordinates so this is 10 and this is 13 so first you draw this and this is 10 10.24 13.09 so this is 10.24 13.09 and here you will get 13.09 and 13.09 so the final bending moment by method of superimposition is shown by the shaded area or vertical member show horizontal ordinates say this is the BMD or vertical members this is BMD for horizontal members so once you understand how to construct these BMDs I think it's very easy so this is BMD so you do the practice for solving these problems so this is also a non sway type why non sway because both supports are fixed heights of the columns are same about vertical centroidal axis the geometry is same loading is symmetrical and therefore the frame is of non sway type frame and its analysis is carried out exactly similar to the continuous beams okay now we have finished the frames with non sway analysis now next let's come to the sway analysis how to carry out the sway analysis of frame and this is very important because once you understand the sway analysis then moment distribution topic you will find is very very simple say so, now analysis of sway frames analysis of sway frames analysis of sway frames if the given frame is of sway type frame suppose given frame is of sway type frame its analysis is to be carried out in two stages so let's take an example say we have a frame say like this subjected to say horizontal load P here so this is a sway type no doubt sway towards right talkers and its analysis is to be carried out in three steps the first in uh, two stages the first assume that the sway of frame is prevented this is the external applied load P and here I am applying a resisting force RF so assume that the sway of the frame is prevented by applying a resisting force RF then plus now let's allow the sway towards right let us allow the sway of the frame towards right sway may occur towards left right anyway but let's assume sway is towards right so here it will occur towards right because load is acting towards right so delta is the sway so delta is the sway now don't show any external loading no external loading only here 
external loading but sway is prevented here allow the sway is a delta when we allow the sway so anti clockwise moment at the end of the column due to sway are developed only at the end of column and each moment developed here is 6 ei delta upon l square 6 ei delta upon l square this is also 6 ei delta upon l square 6 ei delta upon l square so anti clockwise moment only at the ends of the columns will be developed due to the sway towards right now this analysis is called primary analysis so this is primary or non sway analysis non sway non sway analysis and this analysis is called secondary analysis or we can say this is sway analysis sway analysis two steps primary analysis and sway analysis so primary or non sway analysis now here find find rf after analyzing after complete non sway analysis by using equilibrium conditions find rf that is resisting force find rf equal to resisting force by using equilibrium condition or by taking total shearing column equal to 0 because RF acts horizontally. Similarly here find yes that is sway force. So here this force causing S is called sway force, sway force causing sway of the frame, responsible for sway of the frame. So again by using equilibrium conditions. So non-sway analysis, sway analysis. Initially assume sway is prevented by applying the resisting force RF. Complete the non-sway analysis as usual. You will get RF by using total shearing column or by using equilibrium conditions. conditions. Then second stage, stage 2, this is called secondary analysis. Allow the sway towards right delta if delta is the sway and assume any value assume any value for ei delta so any value you assume for ei delta say 10 20 100 thousand whatever you want you assume any value for ei delta find out fixed end moments you know the distribution factors carry out the sway analysis you will get the sway force after applying equilibrium conditions. Then the correction factor, let's find out correction factor. And this is equal to N equal to RF divided by S is the correction factor. You, once you get the correction factor, then final moments, final moments equal to the non-sway moments non-sway moments plus correction factor into sway moments correction factor into sway moment that is this primary moments plus n into secondary moments so this gives us the final moments by using this formula means the sway analysis is again only it is a lengthy so understanding so analysis is not difficult so first case say this is a and this is b two stages analysis is to be carried out in two stages non so analysis as usual after getting the end moments apply equilibrium conditions find out rf then assume sway towards right no external loading acting on the frame carry out sway analysis and find out the sway force after getting these two forces, find out correction factor and then the final moments, that is primary moments and secondary moment plus correction factor into the secondary moments, you will get final moments and then you draw BMD, then you draw BMD. So 
if you want to write down the steps, what are the steps for analysis? Initially, first step, assume sway of the frame is prevented by applying the resisting force RF and carry out non-sway analysis. Then by using equilibrium conditions, find out resisting force RF. These two steps. Third step, assume sway towards the right, no external loading acting on the frame. Carry out the sway and assume any arbitrary value of EI delta, find out fixed end moments and carry out sway analysis. And then fourth step, by applying equilibrium conditions, find out sway force. And fifth step, find out correction factor, n equal to rf by s. And the final sixth step, the final moments equal to the non-sway moments plus correction factor into the sway moments and the last construct BMD. So this is the procedure to analyze the sway frames. Now during the next lecture what we will do, we will solve few problems of the sway frames. So next we will solve some problems of sway frames and now we will stop here. Thank you very much.